It's time for another battle between the Covenant forces and the UNSC. Yes, it's another Halo adventure, but from a totally different perspective. This is Halo Wars 2, and of course this is the Xbox One and PC exclusive. I've been uh, uh, digging deep into exclusives for the PlayStation 4 and the Switch recently, and this game got uh, kind of got pushed to the side a little bit, but uh, it's time to take a look at a Microsoft exclusive. Halo Wars 2 is a real-time strategy game, and the hook is that it's on a console. Of course, it's a sequel to uh, Halo Wars 1, which was on the Xbox 360. It was kind of a cult hit. It wasn't the big, you know, massive system seller that the Halo franchise is kind of typically known for, mostly because real-time strategy games have always struggled to be uh, ported or to be developed even uh, for consoles out there. And, you know, Halo Wars 2, while it's actually a much smoother playing experience than probably any other RTS that I can remember on a console, it certainly uh, doesn't rise to uh, the top of the class in the genre. There are way better RTS experiences to play out there, some of them dating back decades. Now that's not to say that there isn't some real beauty to discover in this game. Uh, I was actually astounded by the quality of the cut sequences in this. I thought that the storytelling was fantastic, and I think the game truly excels at uh, showcasing the scale of the battlefield and how epic the uh, you know the the war torn uh, you know, interstellar kind of battles of uh, the Halo universe can be, and it gets your mind kind of exploding with ideas and a real sense of understanding how epic in scale this franchise has become, and also, you know, as somebody that's played games for as long as I have, you can't help but think that somewhere down the road there is going to be this wonderful blending uh, of an RTS and a first-person shooter in the Halo universe, and this kind of, you know, gets you thinking in that direction. It tips its hat in that direction, which is wonderful. Now, this is a story that's about this group of the Covenant called the Banished, and they're led by this fearsome leader uh, named Atriox, and he has a very rough, gruff voice, and he commands a lot of other rough, gruff voices dudes, and uh, they've got some epic weaponry, some new stuff that we haven't seen in the Halo franchise before. Of course, we see a lot of units like Banshees and things like that, that we've seen in uh, Halo games forever, uh, and we have, you know, Warthogs on the UNSC side and stuff, and then you've also got epic scale, huge ships that you can bring into battle. This is a game about, uh, you know, land vehicles and mechs and uh, air vehicles as well. It's about base building, um, but, you know, you know, there are severe limitations uh, sort of placed on you with where you can build and how you can access all of these different units that you are building. There are several different issues that sort of cap your entertainment here, I think. Uh, my first big complaint is that you just can't pull back enough, and this is something that I've seen again and again in RTS games. I just want to be able to pull the camera back a little bit farther so I can survey more of the map. Now, obviously, that probably has something to do with the way the gameplay is engineered and how much the fog of war kind of exists exists for you to, you know, uh, discover and unveil as you work your way around a map. I get that. I understand that. I just feel like it, there's this artificial clunk as I'm trying to pull the camera back to see more of where I can build. You also can't place your buildings anywhere. You've got to place all of your buildings on these predetermined little uh, boxes and squares. Now you can grow those buildings. You can start with sort of basic, uh, you know, mini sites and then grow them into sort of headquarters and command centers that give you more other, uh, more boxes that you can add where you can place more buildings. And it's fun to grow all of those vehicles in there and all those unit types, but there's another cap that kind of is a drag, and that's you're kind of capped at a, a population of 80 or 100, and every unit that you create is uh, a chunk of that population. So you might create a, uh, you know, a flying ship that takes up seven of the, uh, of the units inside of that population. So you end up with a pretty small collection of vehicles and on foot, you know, units as well. And uh, it's a little deflating, you know, you, you want to get into that sort of epic sense of scale and see units running around all over the place. Uh, but you never quite crest to that, and it's kind of a drag. I think the emphasis, though, in this game, much like the Halo first-person shooters, is to kind of profile the Spartans and to showcase that there's, you know, actual heroes on the battlefield and actual villains on the battlefield. And there is a real uh, sense of, you know, placing these characters front and center and trying to boost their prominence in the story, and I get all that. It's not unlike what they did with Dawn of War 2 over at Relic, and presumably there'll be shades of Dawn of War 2 and Dawn of War 3, which is coming up soon. Um, I couldn't get that game out of my mind, by the way, because the Relic stuff is just 
infinitely more enjoyable here. I also, I, I couldn't drop the fact that Creative Assembly makes the Total War games. They've got the Total War Warhammer out there, and those games are just littered with, you know, lots of uh, embellishment and, and so much management and so many different layers of gameplay and this sort of meta experience that's just... Uh, kind of overwhelming. This is kind of by the numbers. It's meant to be, you know, quick in and get some, you know, cool explosions and stuff. And the way that they kind of counter all of the limitations with how much you can grow your units or even your base is they give you these leader powers. And the leader powers are actually quite wonderful. You can rein in, you know, these incredible archer missiles or, uh, you know, heal a bunch of units with a little sort of, uh, uh, you know, circular pad where everybody gets uh, replenished, which is cool with these little drones that fly around. You've got EMP devices. You've got the ability to drop in some ODST characters as well, which will kick all kinds of ass for you. And you can level all of those up as well as level up the buildings in your base um, you know and, and grow that a little bit uh, and it's fun it just feels a little hand-holdy um, and that's true with the campaign which kind of works to train you so that you're gonna get super psyched to get into the multiplayer and they've done some pretty interesting stuff with the multiplayer you've got like domination modes and uh, where you're trying to take over areas of the map or stronghold modes where you're trying to keep uh, you know areas secured from your enemy invasions uh, they've also got this blitz mode which is meant to kind of get you unwrapping card packs is that an animation that's becoming overused or what in the video game industry? How many animations and how many teams of artists and animators are there working in games right now uh, sort of illustrating the act of opening a deck of cards and spraying cards out all over the screen and getting you hooked on that? Um, Blitz is really just about random, you know, kick-ass battles. You don't know how it's going to end up. It's just you, you have lots of different vehicle types and unit types and, yeah, you know, good luck to you. Get into that battle. There's going to be explosions all over the place. It's fun. The whole game is fun. It's just not wow fun. It's just not knock you on your ass fun. And it, honestly, the cutscenes kind of suggest that it will be that good and you get hyped up that it will be that good but i finished the campaign and i was like that's it that's all that's it huh okay you know and i played it on the xbox one and i played it on the pc and it's definitely a little bit more interesting on the pc i did have a few um uh bugs and issues come on move they're stuck this is crashed They're not moving. Uh-oh. It's like there was this one point on the Xbox One. Unfortunately, I didn't record any footage of this, but the uh, the cinema bars, you know, those bars that pop up to sort of showcase a, a cut sequences going on. They have some of the pre-rendered stuff, which looks like it was made by uh, the, you know, Blur or something. It's just beautiful cut sequences. And then they also have in-game cut sequences. Well, one of these in-game cut sequences, the cinema bars, didn't disappear when it became gameplay again. And so I, I had even less of a screen. Not only could I not pull the camera back far enough, but I had my top and bottom cut off and I was trying to, you know, contend with that. And I, that was a drag. I also had, a, you know, this, this loading screen that just wouldn't end. I know they're patching it. I know it will get smoother. It just didn't feel as compelling. It just didn't feel as much of, like, you can't not play this thing as you would expect out of a, a Halo exclusive for the Xbox One, you know? And on the PC, it feels a little thin compared to the way better RTS games that are out there that uh, you can rattle off in your head. I feel that Microsoft, it's it's commendable and it's fantastic that they're, uh, they're adding to the Halo universe with the Halo Wars games. It's not that they're bad, uh, and I include the first game as well, which was kind of cool. It had some, uh, you know, performance issues on the Xbox 360, uh, but it was still fun, and this is still fun. Um, and it's a solid, solid playing RTS on console just didn't knock me out. You know, what can I say? I'm going to give Halo Wars 2 a 7 out of 10. Hey, thanks for checking out that video on our EPN channel. It's just one small part of the things that we make around here. So if you liked it, don't forget to check out some of our other vids and hit that subscribe button.